Good morning. I'd like to welcome all those in person and those tuning in online to this third Sunday in Lent worship here at Church of the Resurrection. My name is Stephen Blackmore. I'm the priest here at Church of the Resurrection, and myself and Reverend Leon will be leading you through uh, today's worship. Uh, just a reminder of our sort of safety protocols in place, please do keep your masks on through the duration of the service, and uh, later at communion we'll be having the opportunity to receive the bread, and uh, you'll receive the bread, you'll be directed down to form a single uh, file line down the center aisle and come forward and we'll have two stations to receive the bread and uh, you can take the bread and then return to your pew uh, to receive it. And, uh, and we are encouraging folks as well to try not to linger too long in the space following the service, but there is a chance to sort of chat with people kind of on your way out and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll meet you uh, out by the back doors as well at the conclusion of our service. A few announcements, just some things happening this week to make you aware of. Of course, Tuesday evening, our Lenten book study continues with Henry Nouwen's book, Turn My Morning Into Dancing, Finding Hope in Hard Times. And then on Wednesday, we'll be having our noon renewal service over Zoom from at 12 o'clock and followed with a little bit of a coffee check-in time uh, following the service. And then uh, on Wednesday evening, we'll be having a special event, a family ministry town hall over Zoom. This is a chance for folks who are interested to uh, talk more about how we can grow in our ability to engage young people in the parish and uh, to look at the past successes and also to contemplate some new ideas as we look forward to moving into the future. So that's over at 7 p.m. on Wednesday over Zoom. The link's gone out in the parish e-blast. If you're not sure how to join and if you'd like to, talk to myself or one of the wardens following the service and uh, we'll make sure you can get connected that way. Before worship begins, Church of the Resurrection would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and directly adjacent to Haldeman Treaty territory. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. stand together. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father and Mother, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify you. Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father of mercy, alone we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. When we are discouraged by our weakness, strengthen us to follow Christ, our pattern and our hope, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. For those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, may your word be spoken, may your word be heard, and may your word be lived. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, in the spirit of St. Patrick's Day, a short story 
There was a dying Irishman who was visited by his parish priest. The senior priest asked him if he was ready to renounce the devil and all his works. Oh, Father, said Pat, don't ask me that. I am going to a strange country, and I don't intend to make myself enemies. <laughs> I've got to think about that one for a second. <laughs> well, have you ever thought about what you think you'll be doing in those last moments of life. It's probably not something we spend a lot of time thinking about. But I think most of us would choose to be surrounded by family and friends, hopefully in the comfort of our own bed. Perhaps we'll want to be prayed with or have some of our favorite music playing, or maybe we'll just want peace and quiet. World events might cause us to think about such things. For we are reminded continually of the fragility of human life and that we will not know the day or the hour that our Lord will call us home. But what if we did? What if we did know the moment when we will die? What would you do today if you knew you only had a few years, months, weeks, or even days left? Now we might divide today's gospel reading into two parts. The first seems to be dealing with the question of theodicy. That is, why does God allow bad things to happen? Jesus references two tragic incidents, murdered Galileans at the hands of Pilate, who added to their indignity by mingling their blood with pagan sacrifices. And then he mentions the collapsing of a wall tower of Jerusalem that took 18 lives. And Jesus asks rhetorically, was there something these poor folk did to deserve such fates? Now we might think that it is a distasteful question for people to ask amid tragedy, but isn't it also a human question? For when terrible things happen, don't we search for answers? Don't we want to know if victims somehow brought their fate upon themselves? Perhaps this is a way that we try to make sense of how God can allow these things to happen. Perhaps it's a way of reconciling the existence of an all-powerful and good God with the presence of evil and pain. If these are bad people, then perhaps in some way they brought this upon themselves. Is this God's justice being done? Is it karma? And the answer here and throughout Scripture is no. Suffering and tragedy are not the result of God doling out punishment. Jesus states that all are headed for such a fate, but for repentance. But what does he mean by that? Let's look at this teaching in its context in Luke's gospel. It's important for us to remember that Luke is very apocalyptically oriented. He is very concerned with warning his readers about the end of this age. An apocalyptic, this genre of literature, includes teaching that the end is near and there are wrongs to be righted but also that with destruction comes new creation, a new life. Luke chapter 12, the previous chapter to today's reading, sets the stage for today's text. It is a long interaction between Jesus and the disciples that revolves around the theme of being ready for the apocalypse. Jesus admonishes the disciples to acknowledge Jesus, to be responsible stewards, to live in confidence in the provision of God, to be ready to be faithful, to endure the social disruption of the last days, and to recognize the signs that the apocalypse is ahead. And he uses the example of settling a legal case before the case gets to court to encourage the disciples to take actions necessary to be part of the realm. If they do not, they will pay the apocalyptic price. One writer put it this way, but Jesus uses the deaths of the Galileans to make a point. To expand slightly, unless you repent, you will all perish as they did when the apocalypse occurs. In Luke Acts, to repent is to turn away from the assumptions, attitudes, and actions of the old age and to live towards the values and practices of the realm of God as taught by Jesus and as embodied in the life of the church. Now Jesus goes on to offer a parable as an illustration for the need for repentance. He references an unfruitful fig tree that's had three years to bear fruit without success. 
and the owner has grown impatient and decides to cut it down, perhaps to make room for a new crop. But the gardener, the one who has spent the most time with this plant, intercedes on its behalf. He asks for one more year, one more year to nourish it and to give it every opportunity to fulfill its purpose. The owner relents, though promises that judgment will fall one year hence. This parable, like the teaching preceding it, is a warning in the apocalyptic spirit. And as we read it, we might picture a God who is eager to dole out death and judgment, ready to rain down plagues and thunderbolts and chop down stubborn trees. But what if instead, instead we see it from the other side, from a positive side, that we are given one more year? One more year. What would we do with that time? Jesus, of course, gives us the answer. He talks about repentance. But what if repentance is not so much about beating ourselves up over our failings, over our regrets, our sinful behaviors? But what if instead it's about a positive thing? What if it's about saying yes to the Spirit's work in us that is transforming us into citizens of a different realm? Like a butterfly fighting to break free from its cocoon, what if Jesus is calling us to let go of that which so easily ensnares us so that we can emerge a new creation? And what if that new creation doesn't start after we die, but it starts in this life, which actually prepares us for the next? Today's gospel reminds us that clearly there are calamities outside of our control. Glenna was right to say last week that in some ways we haven't left Lent 2020 since the pandemic hit us. These last few years have felt like a wandering in the wilderness, being forced to adapt to situations outside our control, with sickness and a threat of death always placed in front of us on the news. We hope to be moving into the latter stages of this pandemic, and we hope and pray that the easing of restrictions will not set us back in our fight against COVID-19, but will be signs that we are moving into endemic. If this is the case, then we must consider what our new normal for our church life together will look like. This week, we're holding a town hall over Zoom to discuss family ministry at Church of the Resurrection. How can we better engage the young people of this parish and attract new young families to our community? How do we reconnect with those that we haven't seen in a few years now? Are new ministries and programming necessary to rebuild community here at Resurrection? What new models of mission and ministry need to be explored for our long-term financial viability as well? The Gospel writer, Luke, wrote with a particular Christian community in mind. I believe today's gospel served as a reminder to his community, and indeed to our own, that time is of the essence. There are terrible forces outside our control that would threaten us, but there is also the interceding gardener whose care and concern is giving us more time to bear fruit. What will we do with that time as a community? What will you do with the time left to you, personally? Are there kingdom things you need to get on with in your life? Things like repairing relationships, faith sharing, giving to worthy causes. What if you knew you only had one year left? How would you spend that precious time? Would you spend it investing in eternity, sowing seeds of the kingdom, saying and doing the kinds of things that Jesus said and did in his lifetime? And are there things you need to move on from before you leave this earth? We close with a story told about former U.S. President Hubert Humphreys. When at his funeral, sitting next to Humphreys' widow was former president and old political adversary of Humphreys, Richard Nixon. And Nixon had recently just gone through the Watergate scandal not long before this. But just before Humphreys' death, Humphrey had called Nixon and Jesse Jackson had asked him why. Why would he call his enemy at this time? And this is what Humphrey said to Jackson. Jesse, from this vantage point, with the sun setting in my life, all of the speeches, the political conventions, the crowds, and the great fights are behind me now. At a time like this, you are forced to deal with your irreducible essence, forced to grapple with that which is really important to you. What I have concluded about life 
when all is said and done, is that we must forgive each other and redeem each other and then move on. Let us pray. Gracious and life-giving God, we thank you for our lives. That even in the midst of times of challenge, we can stop and give thanks for all that we have and all that we are. Lord, we pray that you would make us mindful of the fleetingness of this life, not to be fearful, but to be mindful of your kingdom realm present in this world, looking to burst forth from our own lives forgiveness, healing love, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make us mindful in this season to put first things first as we discern your leading. May your Holy Spirit inspire us and move us forward. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord before prayers, asking for all we need to be faithful in the word, repenting of all that takes us away from God. Let us pray for the whole church that all who follow Christ may be a source of encouragement and strength for those seeking to know God. We pray for our church of the resurrection, for our priest Leon, Elizabeth, Stephen, Bob, and Margaret. We pray for our Bishop Susan. And in the Niagara Diocese, we pray for all saints, Lutheran, Anglican Church, Guelph, Pastor Brian Vicar Rector, Canon William Thomas, Priest Assistant, the Reverend Christian Catworthy, deacon and the people of that parish. In our cycle of prayer today, we pray for Kyle and Joe Greig, Emmanuel and Lourdes Gill, John and Vicki Gillen and their families. God of love, yeah, hear our prayer. For all those preparing to receive the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, that they may be fully open to God's grace and love. God of love, hear our prayer. For our governments and legislatures, that they may work to establish and protect the dignity and equality of all people. Let us pray for peace, especially in the country of Ukraine. Heavenly Father, hear our praise for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Lord, we ask for peace for those who need peace, reconciliation for those who need reconciliation, and comfort for all who don't know what tomorrow will bring. Lord, may your kingdom come and your will be done. God of love, hear our prayer. For all God's people, that we will have strength to be faithful in his commandments. For those celebrating this week, we pray for Nathan Steves, Scott Swain, Gail Donovan, Steve Stoughton, who are celebrating birthdays, and Nancy and Terry Cause, who are celebrating their anniversary. May God bless them as they celebrate and in the year ahead. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. For our own community, that for each one of us, this time of Lent may be a time of deepening conversion and praying. God of love, yeah. hear our prayer. For who all who are sick or suffering, lonely or bereaved, that the Lord would bring healing to the sick and comfort to the dying. 
conversion to sinners, a light to those experiencing darkness. And so we pray for those who are sick. Marlene H., Frank, Fred, John and Sylvia, Norma, Dolores, Hazel, Molly, Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Faye, Joan, David and Janet, Dan R., Mabel Wayne, Gary, Norma, Harry, Steve, Corinne, Marlene, the Kinch family, Wyatt, Lisa and Martin, Phyllis C., Susan Turnbull, Bibi, Edna, Gord and Ian, Josh, Victor, Rebecca, Raquel, and Kados, and Beth S. God of love, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in charity, fasting, and prayer, you have shown us a remedy for sin. Listen in love to our prayers and lift our hearts with the assurance of your mercy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue in worship with a prayer for Ukraine. Lord Jesus, the protector of the vulnerable, stretch out your hand over the frightened people of Ukraine. We pray for those who will be displaced and divided by violence this day. We pray for those who wait in anxiety to know their future. Gather them each to other for courage and solidarity. And just as you appear to the disciples in the upper room, offering your deep peace as a bulwark against apprehension, we urgently ask the same gift for our Ukraine siblings. We pray all this for their sake and in your strong name. Amen. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the time when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. The Lord enrich you with God's grace and nourish you with God's blessing. The Lord defend you in, in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your praise and above you from your offenses. 
for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please stand. God's peace, my friends. Peace, peace. We know your power to triumph over weakness. May we who ask forgiveness be ready to forgive one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, and at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of dis discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in peace as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and life, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured. May be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord, Lord by your cross, cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set us free. You are Savior of the world. world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us into your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to the feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray together. Our Lord, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. See what you become and become what you see. The gift of God for you, the whole and beloved people of God.
Let us pray. God of mercy and forgiveness, may we who share this sacrament live together in unity and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. God of our pilgrim, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise a broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sin in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who lead us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. 